It is July 8th. This is the two-minute drill. We're kicking it off with some fantasy today. Cam Newton, everyone's excited for him to finally be back where he belongs as a starting quarterback. The question, should he be a starting quarterback for you on week one of your fantasy league? Ian, what do you think? So we just got to realize right now, the Patriots have anointed Cam as their quarterback. That's why they're paying him a contract worth up to $7.5 Jared Stedham is out of the question, people. It's the Cam show. So with that, we know he's going to be out there. And the reason why his ADP is still so low is because of these injury concerns. But when Cam Newton's out there, Cam is a QB1. And I think we're underrating how good this fit could be in year one. Not like the guy's ever won with awesome receivers in the past. And now he's in an offense, which as our own Seth Galina pointed out in his awesome breakdown of Newton with the Patriots, they've embraced dual threat quarterbacks in the past, specifically Jacoby Brissett in 2016 when TB12 and Jimmy G were on the bench. Cam is a, you know, I hate the word, but a generational quarterback in terms of his dual threat talents. Now he's got a coaching staff that will get the most out of him. I'm buying him as a fantasy QB1. Ian, I know you're the expert here in fantasy, but I'm going to have to disagree with you. I'm selling that. I just would not be comfortable having him as my starting fantasy quarterback just because of those injuries concerned. You know, I know he is, you know, a top 10 quarterback possibly when healthy. We saw it in 2015 in that first half of 2018. But I'm thinking back to this past year, you know, that game against the Buccaneers in prime time. I mean, that one was just flat out atrocious. I mean, there's no sugarcoating it. I, I would just be too concerned with it. But I do love the move by Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. I think that was a good move for them. But for fantasy, I'm going to have to sell it. So right now, over the past week, average draft position in best ball is about 16 for Cam Newton. The guys ahead of him, Aaron Rodgers is ahead of him. There's no way that I'm taking Aaron Rodgers in fantasy ahead of Cam Newton guy that has had 100 or more rushing attempts in all but two injury shortened seasons the guy's gonna run the ball and I don't know Anthony if you haven't seen if you're not on Instagram if you haven't seen these workouts this guy looks pretty healthy to me uh, and I know I'm not an expert or anything like that but he looks pretty healthy I anticipate that Cam Newton is going to be much closer to the one we saw in the first half of 2018 and in 2015 which seems like 20 years ago but isn't that long ago um, and he is a guy that I absolutely will be taking on that fringe end of the QB1 range because his upside, it's top five, easy. Yeah, if we see Cam's ADP start creeping towards, you know, the top 10 range, maybe we can talk. But for now, absolutely. Speaking of those top 10 range, though, ESPN has released their top 10 quarterbacks, and here's the list. Number one, Patrick Mahomes. Number two, Russell Wilson. Three, Aaron Rodgers. Four, Deshaun Watson. Five, Drew Brees. Six, Lamar Jackson. Seven, TB12, the GOAT. Eight, Carson Wentz. Nine, Dak Prescott. And 10, Matthew Stafford. Guys, thoughts on this list? You know, well, first off, I got to say, George, I have been watching Cam Newton's Instagram, and I got to say, the guy is absolutely ripped. I mean, he's menacing. I, my jaw kind of drops, and every single time I'm going to the gym, I'm thinking I want to look like Cam Jesus. Newton. But, but, but yeah, Keep that's another pants, topic of conversation. <laughs> All right. But there was a lot of things, I, a lot of issues I had with this list. But on there, they had a highest ranking and a lowest ranking there for every quarterback. And someone actually had the audacity to rank Russell Wilson ninth in the NFL. There's actually someone out there that thinks our highest graded quarterback from last year that had 34 big time throws and one turnover where they play when throwing deep is a the ninth best quarterback. I'm not sure when you're watching this guy create special plays, you know, creating outside the structure that you think, yeah, he's just the ninth best quarterback in the NFL. I mean, that's just kind of, you know, mind boggling. I, that is crazy to me. It's insane. Um, and the place that I think comes, the second craziest thing that I've seen on this list, and by the way, I, I think this is a great thing, a great exercise to do, but how consensus arrives at Aaron Rodgers at number three, it, maybe five, six years ago, yes. But over the past five years, he's been a top five PFF graded quarterback just once. Past two seasons, his rate of positively graded throws, think about precise throws downfield. He's making those at a bottom third rate in the NFL. That used to be his thing. He was top five every year. He's not anymore. So as much as Aaron Rodgers may be one of the most talented quarterbacks, he's not doing it over the course of a season anywhere close to number three overall in the league. Yeah, the one thing I did like about this list, I'm with you on Rodgers not quite being top three these days, but getting Matthew Stafford in there at number 10 was good to see because Let's face it, this guy was a top 10 quarterback last year and truly more of a top five in those first eight weeks of the season. And, you know, hasn't always gotten to love, hasn't found all that much playoff success in Detroit and spent, you know, the good part of the be better part of the last half decade just throwing the ball down low to Theo Riddick and Golden Tate. But Daryl Bevo came to Detroit and immediately put in this gunslinging offense that's using Stafford's freaking rocket for an arm. 
downfield shots, Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, he had the highest deep rate in our PFF database of just consistently throwing the ball 20 plus yards downfield. I mean, the MVP talks before Stafford got hurt was Lamar Jackson, Russ Wilson, then Matthew Stafford. Very excited to see the 2020 version of the Lions as well. Yeah, I think the real question should be, is Matthew Stafford better than Aaron Rodgers? For some reason, I think we'd be the only ones to say that, and that's kind of crazy. But anyway, last but not least, our guy, Sam Monson, he wrote a great piece over at PFF.com regarding Sam Darnold and how the New York Jets really need him to kind of take that step, next step forward here in 2020. So guys, do you think it is a make or break year for Sam Darnold? I love taking the next step questions. They're one of my favorites. Sam Darnold has been bad. But sometimes the environment in which you're in is really tough. Now, I have some personal experience. I moved from the West Coast to the East Coast in my early 20s. First year, first couple of years, kind of rough. But you get the hang of things, you get motto, you know, you get used to your friends and your coach, and all of a sudden things can get a little better. He has shown the potential to make throws down the football field that you say, wow, this guy can be a top 10 quarterback. That's how he ranked in the top 10 in our accuracy charting for accurate throw rate. So it's there, and I think with the right kind of headspace, you know, not seeing ghosts against New England, he can scratch top 15, top 12 potential um, this year. And that is a make it season for Sam Donald. You absolutely see the flashes almost on a weekly basis, but I'm just not sure why we should expect this big step forward other than Darnold, you know, turning 23 and getting a year older because his coach, the same guy that's been running one of the NFL's slowest paced offenses, really have no evidence of Adam Gase enabling a productive offense if Peyton Manning isn't his quarterback. His offensive line, I mean, they just kind of took the Buffalo Bills 2019 route where they just kind of signed a bunch of free agents and are hoping it's going to work out. And at wide receiver, I mean, they replaced Robbie Anderson with Prashad Perryman. They added Denzel Mims, who I like, hopefully get some Chris Herndon. But we're still talking about anyone's idea of a top of a bottom five, excuse me, a receiving corps in the league. So, you know, I'm buying Sam Darnold's long term future, but in 2020, as long as Mr. Gase is hanging around, I'm out. Not a Gase fan. Wow. Yeah. I, th I think I'm gonna have to shatter the glass here and I'm, you know, I'm selling them off, not for just 2020, but for the long-term future. And I, I really hate to say it, and, you know, our biggest concern with him coming out of USC was his decision-making. We were really sure if that was gonna hold up in the NFL because it was really bad in the Pac-12. And, you know, so far he's shown us the same thing. He's proved us right that the decision-making just really isn't there. He's had a, one of the worst turnover-worthy play rates over the last couple of years. His PFF grade in his first two seasons is nothing special. I mean, when you're comparing him to other quarterbacks in the first two years, he's right around in that Mitchell Trubisky area. So that's really not a big promising thing. And I know the supporting cast hasn't been good. The offensive line has been atrocious. But again, that decision-making behind that offensive line has been just as bad. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.